All right, this uh, experiment here is for my buddy Budkins over in the UK, and he asked me to try salt water uh, as well as the tap water to see if uh, the electrolyte uh, differential made any difference uh, when I used my little tester on one of these uh, uh, exciter circuits. This is the Slayer uh, exciter that I showed in my last video running off a little solar panel. Today I just got it running off a AA battery, and uh, I've got it hooked up to a scope to show the waveform. Now that's a nice kind of a sine wave waveform, and it's running at about 3 megahertz. You can probably see that in the camera. And I've got another function here so you can see what the uh, graph of that looks like, which I found very handy. And there's the spike right there um, at right about uh, 3.12 megahertz. Let the camera will pick that up. And drop the division down a little bit here. You can see it a little bit better. But yeah, that uh, the other one uh, that I was working with the other day was up there around 5. And then the uh, Dr. Slayer sec exciters run up there around uh, 10 to 13, 14, 15 megahertz. But this one uh, uh, gets that big spike at about 3.1 uh, megahertz. Uh, there are other multiple harmonics in this, though, that... I've decided that this is a, a compounding of waveforms. This is not a simple thing. And if you see what that looks like, it's jaggedy. It's not smooth. And I think what's going on here is we've got compounding waveforms that are causing this effect. And uh, this is the, the little tester here to show the, the energy in the water. And uh, this camera's not going to pick this up very well because it's broad daylight, but you can see that light come on. And this is the salt water over here. I should be doing this at night to be able to see this better. There's fresh water. There's salt water. And I think there's a little bit better phenomena coming out of the salt water than the fresh water. So anyway, that was, uh, like I say, an experiment I wanted to try to see if there was a difference between the electrolyte and the water. Now, Dr. Stifler's electrolysis experiment, uh, he, uh, he specifies distilled water. So I don't know the dynamic of what I'm doing here versus electrolysis, but uh, these are just glasses of water set on that aluminum block right there uh, to pick up the energy coming off of the back side of this AV plug that's coming out of that L, L1 coil, I believe they call that, on the uh, exciter circuit. And that's uh, the oscilloscope is connected to the circuit strictly with a loop of wire going to the probe that goes to the scope. That's one of those computer-generated uh, uh, oscilloscopes. And um, like I say, this uh, water thing is... Uh, interesting to me and a lot of other people why the energy conducts through water and how that is all happening and it is a an interesting phenomena why that's happening why we're getting that high frequency energy to produce right through water and that little thing there is what they call an outer minkle plug it's a diode going one way and a diode going the other way they're little switching diodes high frequency switching diodes connected at one end and the other end is connected up to the LED and one of the guys said that if I wanted to put a microphone on this and make it a transmitter I replace that uh, LED with a microphone and then when I tap it right there I'll be able to modulate the, uh, the frequency or the amplitude. I'm not sure whether it be AM or FM and uh, make it so I could actually talk through this thing and transmit the uh, voice over the uh, the wavelength. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with people. That's what the waveform looks like. It's basically a sine wave, only very jaggedy because there's multiple waveforms and the frequency is running at uh, about 3 megahertz on this particular coil arrangement. Now, the, the larger ones, it's going to change the frequency on it, but uh, on this particular one, to get this to come on bright here, uh, it's running at about 3 megahertz. Thanks for watching.